Now today we're talking about broken color or breaking up the color as we're painting big shapes. The important part of the shapes, of course, is getting the right size, the right shape, and then making it the right value, and then color-wise make it the right color temperature. And this is a painting by Edgar Payne, and you can see he's done that. The shapes are big, definite, dark sunlights are really separated. They're the right value, the right temperature. Shadows cooler, and in comparison, light area is warmer. So we got that contrast of warm and cool. But then going back and breaking up the color in those big areas. Some of it's value change, like in this shadow on, on this side of the cliff here. It's got a lot of warm orange in the shadow. Uh, some lighter muted orange, some more yellow orange here, some red violet, and then blue violet. And some of it's reflected light, so it's going to be a little bit lighter. But overall, the shadow holds together as somewhat the same value. Obviously it's a lot darker here and lighter here, but it's real close value. And most of it's color change, not too much value change, especially over in here. You can see the subtle variation covers a bit more red, orange, orange down here, more blue, and some value change. Same thing in the light area, pale yellows, pale yellow oranges. There's even some greens up in here. So a lot of variation of color. Same thing in this long shadow, it goes from warmer in here to gradually getting cooler out here. And it would work on some level if the colors were not broken. If it's just one flat value, one flat color, it would be more graphic, more posterized. But the broken color gives it a sense of detail, but it also gives it more form. Especially when you can change the temperature a little bit within the shadow. It's still overall cool compared to the light area but it's got a variation of warm and cool in it. And that creates a vibration, but I can get an orange and blue or a yellow and violet next to each other, and they're somewhat the same value. Uh, it's gonna kind of vibrate and creates a lot more interest. It's a lot better than, than detail. We need some detail. The definition of detail being uh, changing the values, small little darks and lights, as opposed to just small color changes in there. So detail is when we change the values, break up the values into little shapes. And broken color is when you have same value, different color within a shadow or a light area right in here. Very nice, the green, the orange. Now this is a value change for the yellow, but it's real close value. And that brokenness creates more interest, more variation. Plus it makes it look more like a painting. Same thing in here. Got the reds, red, violet, green. A little bit of value change too. These dark greens in here. But again, more of a color change instead of value change. I have a few more to look at here. This is a Hanson put off and a lot of color variation in the mountains back in here. Warm, of course the cool shadows are a value change. But you can see it's slightly more muted green, reds, a little bit of green and red mixed together. So it's some color change in there, but same value. This is uh, also Edgar Payne. Zoom in a little bit there, and you can see all this light area is pretty much one value. Again, it's a subtle value change if there's any, but a lot of color change from grays, gray, blue, gray, green, red, gray, orange. A lot of color in this, this area here. Same thing in the shadow, some color variation. And again, the color variation can be when the sunlight hits here, the rock, and then it bounces back into the shadow. And that creates color variation. Sometimes also a value change in the shadow, but also reflected light and other times broken color just for the sake of color, just to break up an area so it's not as big. Here you have uh, two planes. You have a vertical on the cliff and then a slanted or a flat here. And those two different planes create the bluer and a little bit warmer. They're both cool, but this one's a bit warmer than the flat shadow. So there it's a color change because of the planes are different. Uh, and sometimes again, it's reflected light and other times just broken color for the sake of broken color. I'm not sure if you did much. You can see the color changes on the rocks here. Again, all somewhat same value, but just a little bit of color, subtle color change. Uh, this is a uh, John Folensby. He was a student of John Carlson. And here's a lot of broken color and also a lot of value change. So it reads some of it as detail, 
But some of it doesn't, like this area down here, right there, is a greenish grass, but there's all kinds of color in it. But when you step back a little bit, it really reads as green grass. Same thing here, it's blue-green grass because it's in shadow and a lot of color, reds, yellow greens, but all somewhat close value. This is same thing in this tree. You can really see how much color is in there. Greens, oranges, violets. So this isn't, you know, the extreme of broken color. And it's very effective. Here a little more subtle with Willard Metcalf. You can see the color change in here. This is all somewhat the same value. All this in here is kind of the same value, but different color. Here, color change in the bare trees in these yellow hills back in here. And I, I don't think I can zoom in on here. It's gonna kind of fall apart. But there's subtle color changes. Violets, yellow greens, some orange. Very subtle, but it really works together to make more a very broken area that looks more finished and gives a sense of detail without overdoing it. This is Edward Pothast, probably mispronouncing his name. Uh, but you can see in the shadows, mainly because of reflected light hitting the ground here and then bouncing back in there. Violets, some um, pink, some green, darker purple. You know, it looks like paint, doesn't look like a photograph. And I really like that variation of color in there, green, yellow, violet. And that makes the painting vibrate a bit more, have a bit more interest than just flat color. Going into a, a painting, if I wanna break up an area, I usually look for flatter areas. The creek here is going to have broken color just because, you know, there's an overall color of kind of a bluish green with some warmer oranges in it. So between the orange, the maybe red violet, I'm going to have this base of blue green and I'll scrub a few colors in it. But the bigger, flatter areas, uh, like in here, uh, maybe some of these trees, they aren't flat, but it's a big area that it's a little easier to break up. And if I start with an overall green here, muted yellow green because it's sunlit. I can just subtly add a color to it. Now I would wipe some of it off the brush. I like that color and value for no other reason than that it breaks it up. So if I wipe some of it off it would look the equivalent and this is wet into wet. Same value it just varies the color and that's an orange. Now let's go to a violet, a blue, a lizard and crimson. Maybe gray it a bit more since it's further away. I could put a violet in there. You can see it, it creates more interest in that area. And I'm not trying to change the value. It's probably slightly lighter. But when you're painting into wet paint, it sinks in. And I'm not trying to cover up the yellow green. So I'm wiping some of it off. Same thing with the trees here. I might use short choppy vertical strokes instead of following the form like I did on the hill. And just a little violet. And that pushes it back. But I start with an overall muted darker green, some yellow or orange in it to make it look sunlit, but fairly dark compared to the hill. And then after I have that on there thick enough, I can drag in some violets. Uh, let's go more red violet. And maybe a little cooler because violet is pretty cool. I can get some blue green. I just break up the color a bit. I'm not trying to change the value, and I still want these dark accents in here. So you want to stay with the same value, but just break up the color. A couple more here. Now this is more of a field, and that's where I do a lot of the broken color. Also on the roof, maybe a little bit in the background. The further away, uh, you would have less broken color. But again, I want to stay the right same value. But moving up front, if I want to get more orange in the field here, Again, wipe a lot of it off the brush. And go a bit more red. And I don't have to use a tiny brush. I could uh, make it bigger. Just getting some color variation. And this would be just for the sake of color because there really isn't a you know, reflected light anywhere. It's the ground. There's no shadow with light bouncing back in it. But I don't want to get too much of one color that kills that overall color that I started with. In this case, it would be a, you know, again, pale yellow green, maybe a bit more blue in it. That's my thought process. And I push the violet here pretty strong, but I don't mind that. I don't have to follow the photograph, or even if I'm outside, if I have a reason to make things more violet, I can do that.
There is one more here. This, a lot of opportunity for broken color in the trees, the shadows in the ground. You can even, aside from the flowers being different colors, and value, I can get the same value of this green just in reds, violets, oranges. It has to sink into this overall shadow color though. So it's important to have that big shape down there of the right value, the right temperature. Then you can paint into it and kind of break it up. Just remember when you paint back into it, it's not as thick. I usually wipe off most of it from the brush and just drag some in, then load up again, wipe it off and drag it in. 